Hello, I am Dr. Ng Sui Ching. Welcome to this short video entitled An Overview of Connective Tissue Disease. In the next 15 minutes, you will learn the following. Firstly, the definition of the term connective tissue diseases as used for this lecture. You will know more details about the four main CTDs, namely SLE, scleroderma, inflammatory muscle disease, and Sjogren's syndrome. You will learn about the epidemiology and pathophysiology of these four CTDs, and you will learn clues to diagnosis from history and investigations, and finally, the general principles regarding the management of CTDs. Connective tissue diseases are diseases of the connective tissue caused by systemic inflammation due to autoimmunity. For the purpose of this lecture, we will not discuss all diseases that affect connective tissue. These are the four important CTDs that we will discuss today. Firstly, systemic lupus erythematosus, and here we will include the antiphospholipid syndrome. Secondly, systemic sclerosis, also called scleroderma. Thirdly, inflammatory muscle disease. And finally, Sjogren's syndrome. Systemic lupus erythematosus, as the name suggests, is a condition where there is systemic disease. That is, the disease can affect many systems in the body, including blood cells, the kidney, and the brain. Lupus is a Latin word for wolf, and patients often have this typical wolf-like facial rash as is seen on the cover of this book. Erythematosus means red or inflamed. So, in short, SLE is a condition with systemic disease characterized by a red wolf-like facial rash. In this slide, the patient on your left has the classic Mala rash, which is the acute rash seen in SLE. The patient on your right has the chronic discoid lupus rash, where there is central scarring with hypopigmentation and atrophy. Also note the scarring alopecia on the top of the patient's head. This slide shows the many clinical features seen in SLE. The patients can have the acute lupus rash, chronic lupus rash, alopecia, ulcers, synovitis, cirrhositis, renal disease, neurologic disease. The patient can also have positive immunological tests like the ANA, double-stranded, and SM. All these features are important in the diagnosis of the condition. Besides these clinical features, the lupus patient may also have a syndrome called the antiphospholipid syndrome, where they have an increased risk of thrombosis and the presence of antiphospholipid antibodies. The next important CTD is systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. As the name suggests, it's a condition where, which is systemic, that is, the disease can affect many systems in the body, and there is sclerosis, and sclerosis is the Latin word for hardening of tissue. The condition is also known by another name, scleroderma, which means the hardening of the skin. So in systemic sclerosis, we see hardening and fibrosis of the skin, but in addition to the fibrosis, these patients also have the problem of vasculopathy, characterized by Raynaud's syndrome, and of course, inflammation, for example, interstitial lung disease. This slide shows the important clinical features of systemic sclerosis. There is Raynaud's, with cyanosis of the fingertips due to vasculopathy. There is thickening of the skin, on the fingers as well as dorsum of the hands. There are typical fingertip lesions. And finally, an HRCT scan showing interstitial lung disease. 
All these clinical features seen in patients are also useful for the diagnosis of systemic sclerosis. This includes skin thickening, the fingertip lesions, and features of vessel disease, and finally, autoimmunity. The third condition is inflammatory muscle disease. As the name suggests, this condition is characterized by inflammation of the muscles. There are two main diseases under this category. Firstly, polymyositis, when many muscles are involved. And secondly, dermatomyositis, where the skin as well as the skeletal muscles are involved. As this is an autoimmune disease, autoantibodies are also present. They are the myositis-associated antibodies as well as the myositis-specific antibodies. Features important for diagnosis are obvious. Patients can have symmetrical proximal muscle weakness. The muscle biopsy will show evidence of myositis. There's increased skeletal muscle enzymes and a characteristic EMG pattern. And finally, a typical rash of dermatomyositis as illustrated in this picture. The fourth condition is Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's is an autoimmune disease primarily affecting the tear and salivary glands, thus causing dry eyes and dry mouth. In this picture, the parotid gland is enlarged. Biopsy of the minor salivary glands in the mouth will show salivary gland destructions with CD4 positive T cell infiltration. The diagnosis of Sjogren's syndrome requires the presence of symptoms and signs of dry eyes and dry mouth plus some objective features. These are the presence of autoantibodies like the Rho, La, rheumatoid factor and ANA or salivary gland inflammation as evidenced on the biopsy and finally dryness and inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eyes with ocular staining. The following tables compare the clinical features of these four CTDs. The prominent features seen in SLE are the malar or facial rash, and in scleroderma, there's the thickened skin with Raynaud's phenomenon. In polymyositis, there is the weakness of the muscles. And finally, in Sjogren's, there is dryness of the eyes and mouth. As for the musculoskeletal features, in SLE, we can see arthritis, which is usually not deforming. In scleroderma, we see puffy fingers. And in myositis, the main musculoskeletal feature is muscle weakness. In Sjogren's, we can also see arthritis or just arthralgia. The heart may be involved in SLE, where there is pericarditis, myocarditis, or valvulitis. In scleroderma, the prominent feature is pulmonary hypertension. Cardiomyopathy may also be present. In polymyositis, the patients may have cardiomyopathy. For the pulmonary involvement, in SLE, the patient may have pleurisy or pneumonitis or even pulmonary hemorrhage. In scleroderma, polymyositis, and also in Sjogren's, the patient may have interstitial lung disease. As for central nervous system involvement, it is the SLE patient who suffer neuropsychiatric symptoms, seizures, or strokes. The blood cells are affected in SLE and Sjogren's. In both these conditions, all three cell lines may be low. There is gastrointestinal involvement in scleroderma, causing gastroesophageal reflux and malabsorption. The patient with myositis may have difficulty swallowing due to weak oropharyngeal muscles, and the patient with Sjogren's have dry mouth leading to dental caries and difficulty eating dry food. The renal involvement in SLE is very serious. 
there is glomerular nephritis or even nephrotic syndrome. The patient with scleroderma may suffer renal crisis and the patient with Sjogren's may have interstitial nephritis. This slide shows the epidemiology of the CTDs. CTDs are uncommon, and yet they are still important diseases. Sjogren's syndrome is the most common, and the prevalence has been reported in a range from 0.1 to 0.5%. All these CTDs tend to affect women rather than men. For example, for every male patient with SLE, there may be 7 to 15 women with the same condition. Patients with CTDs all have an underlying genetic predisposition to the condition. Then there's an environmental trigger that starts off the autoimmunity. For SLE, there is increased antibody production with immune complex deposition potentially affecting many organs in the body. In scleroderma, the autoimmune disease is characterized by inflammation, vasculopathy, as well as fibrosis. In inflammatory muscle disease, the autoimmune process predominantly affects the muscles, and in Sjogren's, it predominantly affects the exocrine glands. So, when would we suspect that a patient has a connective tissue disease? Here are some clues from the histories. Patients who have constitutional symptoms like fever, weight loss, fatigue, ill health, arthralgia arthritis, skin rashes, cirrhositis, muscle weakness, Raynaud's dry eyes, and dry mouth. These symptoms may suggest that a patient has a connective tissue disease. When patients have symptoms and signs suggestive of a CTD, it is important to look for autoantibodies like the ANA, the double-stranded DNA, the NTSM, Rho, La, Jo1, and the SCL70. These autoantibodies may indicate the connective tissue disease that they have. Besides autoantibodies, other laboratory tests are important. These include the routine blood count, ESR, the CRP, the renal panel, the muscle enzymes, the X-rays, the ECGs, and, if necessary, biopsies. In the management of patients with CTDs, after establishing the diagnosis, we need to assess the disease severity and the extent of organ involvement. Then we offer the appropriate treatment. These include topical treatment like steroid creams for inflamed skin, sunblocks, artificial tears. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are useful for arthralgia, arthritis, and mild cirrhositis. Steroids are very important medication used in connective tissue disease, and the dose used depends on the severity of the disease, where low doses for mild disease and intravenous high doses are used for life-threatening lupus. Other medications are extremely useful in the management of CTDs. For example, hydroxychloroquine should be given to all patients with SLE unless contraindicated. This is because hydroxychloroquine decreases clinical fares, improves survival, and decreases the risk of thromboembolism. Immunosuppressants used include cyclophosphamide, mycophenolate, azathioprine, and methotrexate. Biologic agents like anti-B-cell therapy are also useful for the management of CTDs. In this video, we have discussed that connective tissue diseases are diseases of the connective tissue caused by systemic inflammation due to autoimmunity. The four important conditions we discussed are SLE, systemic sclerosis, inflammatory muscle disease, and Sjogren's syndrome. 
Patients with SLE have an autoimmune disease characterized by a red lupus or mala rash. Patients with systemic sclerosis have a disease characterized by thickened skin with fibrosis, vasculopathy, and inflammation. Patients with inflammatory muscle disease have problems of inflammation of the muscles causing weakness. And patients with Sjogren's syndrome have inflammation of the tear and salivary glands causing dry eyes and dry mouth. All these 44 conditions are systemic disease and hence other organ systems may be involved. CTDs are uncommon but they are very important conditions and they all tend to affect more women rather than men. Close to diagnosis are the presence of constitutional symptoms and specific clinical features of the conditions as described above. Important investigations to order when we suspect a patient has a CTD are the autoantibodies. In addition, we need to do routine tests including blood counts and urine tests and imaging to look for organ involvement. And in the management of CTDs, we need to establish the diagnosis, assess the disease severity and extent of organ involvement, and then offer the appropriate medication. Medications used include steroids, hydroxychloroquine, immunosuppressive agents, and biologic agents. Thank you.